Respect your beliefs. Respect who you are on the kid. You know, don't try to compare yourself to other drummers. Don't try to compare yourself like to any other musicians. Just be yourself. That's the, the most important thing in my opinion. Nice work. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Welcome, okay. <laughs> uh, welcome to Drumeo, man. 
Thanks, man. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. That's uh, that's one way to start off a, a live lesson right there. <laughs> and to all of you out there watching, please welcome Eloy Casagrande. Hopefully I said that. Perfect. said that right. Big house. Big house. <laughs> I've been told. Much better. Nice. <laughs> For any of you who don't know who Eloy is, you've been blowing up online. You've been playing with Sepultura since 2011, I believe. 2011. Um, yes. One of those like iconic metal bands, and you've been with them for a lot of years now. Uh, and you played on a few different records in exactly. the last few years. Yes. Uh, and you're currently about to, or you're about to start a tour, I guess, this month. Yes, uh, in two days, actually. Okay. So uh, this is like the warm up <laughs> for the tour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. And some of you may remember, Eloy, you played, I believe it was the 2005 or 2006 Modern Drummer Festival um, as the, in the Undiscovered Drummer Contest. Perfect. Yeah, 2005. 2005. And there's that solo of you, uh, you're 14? 14, yes. Playing that. And we actually did a, kind of like a modern day version of that, kind of recapping how it all went and breaking down some of the parts. Yes. But uh, I know a lot of you out there will remember that solo from the Modern Drummer Festival. Uh, you do a lot of session work, you've done lots of clinics, and you're also the winner of the 2022 Drumio Award for Metal Drummer of the Year. Woohoo! So, uh, Let's go Brazil! Yeah, like we <laughs> thought it was the right time to bring him in because you're the winner. <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys for inviting me. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, I came from Brazil yeah. to do it, and uh, it has been like a, like a pleasure. I'm having a lot of fun. Awesome, man. <laughs> all right, man. So we're talking all about applying Brazilian rhythms to metal mm -hmm. and this is something you're the perfect drummer to talk about this because you grew up playing a lot of those styles um, you're very knowledgeable about them and you play in a band that actually incorporates a lot of those rhythms uh -huh. so uh, <laughs> yeah kind of you know like I started playing the drums through the Brazilian music maybe my first seven years of studying drums was only like for the Brazilian stuff yeah I just I discovered metal when I was 13 years old 14 years old and what was the first band that uh, you got into? Like, first metal band? Uh, Black Sabbath. Okay. Yeah, my yeah. number one. Love it. <laughs> Bill Ward. My heart. Yes. <laughs> nice. So you'd grown up playing all these, like, what kinds of styles of music were you playing when you were younger? Uh, just Brazilian music. Uh, all the all different types of rhythms, Brazilian rhythms, because we have, like, a huge, like, collection. Like, Brazil is a big country. Yeah. So it depends on like which state you are living. You have a specific type of music. Yeah. And uh, I play like uh, all the, the, the all types of Brazilian rhythms. You know, yeah. like the north part of Brazil, northeast. It's really known for the for some specific rhythms. They are very interesting. Yeah. And I like to use those to to insert those into metal music. Nice. Is that is that the state of uh Pernambuco? Pernambuco, yes. Okay. Recife, is the, the capital of Pernambuco. It's a yeah. very interesting place where they have the maracatu, frevo. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So we're going to be talking about, um, throughout this lesson, some of the different songs that uh, you've recorded on that kind of have these rhythms kind of built in. Um, I guess to start off, for anyone who isn't familiar with Brazilian rhythms or what some of these styles are, can you just demonstrate even a few of these rhythms just by themselves? Oh yeah, sure, man. Uh, I think it's really valid to say that um, like the, I believe the most important thing is for you to study them first instead of like just trying to learn them a little bit and to use them for a, another thing. Yeah. When I when I incorporate these kind of rhythms to my metal playing, it's not something that I think about. They just came out like naturally. Yeah. Because I studied them, like in the past, I was trying to really understand the culture of my country. So, like, you, you really have to go deep to understand the music, mm -hmm. the energy, the flow, and then you can use it for like a different style. Yeah, you know? I, I think that's a great point because I think a lot of drummers they think, oh, here's the here's the samba or here's the yeah, maraca too. Uh, exactly, and superficial patterns, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. When it's it's a lifestyle and a culture and. Ex and all that kind of stuff. So exactly. Um, yeah, if you want to just oh play yeah, it sure. Start we, off. We have like the samba, and we have like many variations of samba. You have the bossa nova. Mm -hmm. It's like a slower samba. So I can start for like playing a little bit of yeah. bossa nova. Let's come in. And, um, 
the people think that we, there is like a, a clave for the samba. I see a lot of people talking about it and actually it doesn't exist yeah. a clave for samba. It's like you play it randomly, you know, like yeah. it's like a, a free voice in your drum kit that you have. So like a faster samba. Uh, you have also the school of samba that we have in carnival time in Brazil, where you have like those big percussion uh, groups that they go on, on the streets playing the, the carnival, the samba school yeah. of samba. It's more like. this kind of stuff. And um, you have the Baião. Baião is another rhythm from the north part of Brazil, northeast part, and it's more like... You have the Maracatu. I really like these rhythms that I just played to you. I think that these are the the, the best that, that I know, you know, yeah. like the, the principles. The one the one thing I have to say is for like for me growing up hearing some of these rhythms, we play and learning them out of books and out of some videos that you see. I think the thing that lots of us drummers up in the US and Canada and uh, what we don't get is the feel. And when you play that, there's like the the time like inconsistencies of sw uh, swing and straight and it's like right in between and you hear that when you listen to the samba schools and stuff like that is that something that is talked about or is that just part of the way it's played i think a lot of drummers like we play a bossa nova or we play a samba and it's just straight mm -hmm. and it's almost quantized but when you play that it actually has this like uh it breathes a little bit, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, definitely, man. And I'm I'm not the, the best person to play Brazilian rhythms for you, you know. But sounds I, pretty good to because, me. <laughs> because I have been playing metal music for so long, so, yeah. so sometimes I feel a little bit rusty to play this kind of rhythms mm -hmm. because you, you have to bring the volume down. So I have some difficulty to play this kind of stuff, you know. But I use it to study in the past. Yeah. But uh, yes, definitely, we talk about that. That's mm -hmm. the the swing or the lazy notes. Yeah. You know, when they are not like at the the right point, they're not they're, they're not in the grid yeah. when you do a recording session. Most of the time, when we record Brazilian music, we don't play with a metronome mm -hmm. because it needs to breathe. It needs to to flow. Yeah. You know? So is is there something when you were starting out? Uh, how would you recommend someone even gets into that? that feel, if they're learning a samba or learning a, a bossa nova or something like that? How do, they, how do they start to think like that? Or is it just listening to recordings? Just listening. Mm. That's the, the, what I can say, you know? But yeah. you have to look for the Brazilian artists and uh, to like really explore the Brazilian music. So then you can understand the feel. I, I have a lot of uh, friends from outside of Brazil that they go there just to spend some time to live inside these cultures to absorb a little, a little bit more about the rhythms, you know. Yeah. So if you are there, like in, in my my case, I grew up in Brazil. I'm, I was born in Brazil, so I was listening all the time Brazilian music in the radio. Yeah. Even if I didn't want to, I had to listen to Brazilian music. So it makes part of me of yeah. my DNA, you know. But uh, so that's what I, I can say. You have to listen to the original Brazilian music. Mm. Do you want some recommendations? That would actually be great, yeah. Yeah, I just took notes on my, my papers here. You're yeah. so studious. <laughs> it's caveman style. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, we have like a, a very uh, famous Brazilian singer. She's my maybe my number one, is Elise Regina. She's amazing. Tom Jobim, mm -hmm. Baden Powell, 
He's a, 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 he plays the, the acoustic guitar usage play because he passed away. Mm -hmm. Villa Lobos, he's more like um, a classic uh, composer. Djavan, Luis Gonzaga. Luis Gonzaga is considered the father of Bayão, mm -hmm. disciple of, uh, of freedom. Uh, Brazilian drummers that I can tell you. Milton Banana, he was one of the first guys who played the, um, the samba on the drums. Okay. Yeah, Milton Banana with João Gilberto. You know João Gilberto, the acoustic guitar player. Edson Machado. Lenilson Silva, he was my first teacher, like mm -hmm. incredible drummer. Lauro Lelis. Achilles, Achilles Priester. Yeah. I had classes with him. He's really important in my life. He's a good friend that I have. Yeah. Cristiano Rocha is another incredible drummer in Brazil. I had classes with him. He's just amazing. Giba Faveri, who is a, a master on drums as well. He, his samba is just amazing. He's a good friend of mine. Lilian Carmona, who like she, uh, Lilian Carmona, Vera Figueiredo. You probably know Vera. Mm -hmm. So they, they are the women power that we have in Brazil. Awesome. Carlos Bala, Paulo Braga, Cuca Teixeira, Gabriel Bruce, who is a new drummer who is coming up and he's amazing. So just to name a few, nice. I'm sorry, like, no, it was a I big love list. it. We should, uh, we should post all those names below because I want to check out like as many as I can. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry if for the big list. If yes. you say they're good, then they're good. <laughs> uh, they are amazing. They are, they're like, they are my masters. Yeah, you know? love it, man. So those are some of the, the grooves that you'd recommend drummers start out with. Now, how does that all come into your metal playing? And I know there's some songs here you wanted to talk about. And the first one was... Uh, manipulation. Manipulation of Tragedy. Yeah. yeah. That was a song that I recorded in the first album of Sepultura mm -hmm. that I did with them. It's in the album The Mediator. And um, it's kind of like a, a Bayon pattern that I use by the middle of the song. You know, so I keep the ostinato going on my feet. So. And it's like the Bayon, another pattern for Bayon. I can say it's like a Bayon mixed with Machixi, that is another Brazilian groove. So what I did, I started using this high tuning tom on my drums and uh, I applied this to my, my concept. You know, I like to use this high, ton high tuning toms to my drumming. So they bring this percussion instinct yeah. to what I play. So then I, I, I bring my left hand here. So you have like the, this groove going on. It's, Snare drum comes on the one. Yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. And what's, you said there was one other style in there that you merged with the Bayon. Mm -hmm. And what was that one called? Mashishi. And what would the, the basic rhythm be for that? Or I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm it's just like, curious. <laughs> it's more like a, an old samba that the, the people, they use it to okay. dance. Uh, like many, many years ago when the, the, they started playing samba in Brazil. But I, I, I don't remember the actual groove, how it, how it sounds. Yeah. yeah, I'm no, sorry. No, I'll, uh, I'll go look it up. I'm sure someone <laughs> has written it somewhere. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, Brazil. And I, <laughs> they're all just, there's uh, anger in the chat right now. No. <laughs> I, I think it's cool that I don't think there's a lot of drummers who would have like a tom tuned this high on the kit. And I think that's cool that you, you have that for an option uh, mm -hmm. when there's a certain groove that requires it. Yes, so. yes, man. I, both of my toms, they are tuned quite high because I, I like to think them as like some extra, um, some like uh, percussion instruments actually. I don't use them as regular toms. So when I have to do a drum fill, I just don't like spread notes on them because I have to think like which notes I'm gonna play on them. So it's more like a, I have to choose what I'm gonna play with yeah. them, you know? And you're probably not gonna jump straight from this one over there because the jump is 
Exactly. It's a long way. <laughs> yes, exactly. So that's one of the reasons that I kept this on here. So I just use it as uh, an effect. Mm -hmm. you know? Nice. Um, there's. Let's do one more, and then let's play. Let's play another track. Sure, man. Um, this next one uh, is autumn. Oh, the autumn. Um, Altem, yeah, okay. that I'm gonna play or I'm gonna show to you? Uh, just uh, show us the groove. And oh, I... yeah, sure. Altem is in the, the latest Sepultura album, Quadra. And uh, I remember that I was thinking about the, the school of samba pattern. And we have the, the, the timbalito, like the tambourine that we yeah. say in Brazil. And there is like a pattern, it's played there, it's, it's, it's really interesting. So I wanted to bring that to metal music. It sounds like this. So what I decided to do at first was to like bring that to the blast bit. Why not make a Brazilian blast bit? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> the idea is kind of like crazy, but uh, yeah. why not, you know? So the first thing that I was playing was the, the blast bit, but with this accent, with this subdivision. That's awesome, man. Yeah, so I used yeah. that on the, the record. And uh, when we went to, we recorded this album in Sweden. So the producer, Jens Bogren, so he came to me and he changed a little bit this groove. Like instead of playing like just straight notes, he was like, why don't you like put the accent on the two and the, on the four? So we have more like a regular bit. So yeah. then I, I came with this one. That's it. Yes. Is that the session, the Quadra session, the one that Thomas from Meshuggah was there for? No, no, he was at the previous album. Previous one. Yeah, the previous okay. one. <laughs> yes. I have the visit of Thomas Hack in the yeah. studio, yes. What an honor. <laughs> oh, yeah. What a pressure. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Just studying what you're doing. Oh, yeah, that was crazy, man. Oh, nice. Let's do another track. Um, this is another one from your solo project called Resolution. Uh, yes, exactly. And what's the, is there a story behind this song? Something it was based on? Or? Oh yeah, uh, actually this song like the, when we were working with the song, the name was Frank Stein because we had like a bunch of ideas. So we just put everything together. So it became like the resolution song or Frank Stein. And um, it's like the subdivision, like the, 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 the time signature of the songs. The song switches between six and five. So six by four and five by four. And there is a drum solo by the end. Cool. So I'm gonna uh, like die right now. <laughs> nice. Well, we're all here to watch it. So. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I, I I ask you like patience for you guys because it might be like a quite a long solo. That's fine by me. You can go as long <laughs> as you want. <laughs> yeah. Wait, this is a uh, resolution.
Why? <laughs> what am I, what am I supposed to say after that? <laughs> It's unreal, man. That's what I always ask, like, <laughs> why, you know? <laughs> now, the real question is, did you decide to put the solo in or did your bandmate decide to do that? I decided, of course. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he is in the chat right now, so. Oh, uh, is watching. in the chat, yes. <laughs> Actually, like a few weeks ago, he was trying to cut my solo. No, it's maybe, it's better if we just do like, a, you know, like a, when you bring the volume down. Yeah. By the end, it's like, oh man, I don't know. <laughs> like, no, we're gonna keep it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And I was just watching the chats on YouTube and in the Drumio members area, and the two things that people are talking about the most, they're asking about your ghost notes because they're unreal. There's a lot happening there. Is there any uh, technique or anything you worked on to develop your ghost note uh, playing on the snare? Um, actually, no, man. Actually, no. I remember when I had like 16 to 17 years old, mm -hmm. I was playing like in a bunch of metal bands in Brazil. Yeah. So I wasn't playing ghost notes at all, just like back yeah. bits. And then I started having classes with a teacher. His name is Cristiano Rocha, mm -hmm. an incredible Brazilian drummer. And then he came to me and said like, hey, why are you not using ghost notes? Yeah. And I said, I don't know. Like, I just don't. <laughs> because people told me like in the past that it, like ghost notes are not for metal drummers, mm. rock drummers. You don't need to use that. Yeah. And I said like, then he came to me and said, this is going to be like very beautiful to see you playing like ghost notes. Yeah. It helps you to keep the tempo, to be more into the groove. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, let's study ghost notes. So he just showed me to me a few like exercises using like ghost notes on pop music, Brazilian music. And from that, I started using everywhere, you know, yeah. especially into metal music. Nice. You've uh, been listening to some Matt Garska. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> He's uh, like a, a big influence for me, for yeah. sure. And you guys, him. you guys played or opened for them in yes. Brazil when they came down there? Exactly. We opened for them in Sao Paulo, at the Sao Paulo show. Nice. It was amazing. It was the first time that I, I got to see him, him playing live mm -hmm. from the side of his drums and he's just incredible. Yeah. Oh my God. Nice. And of course, a lot of people were talking about your double bass in there too. I think just the, the precision and you actually back up quite a bit on the pedals when you're like playing like steady double bass. Uh -huh. um, is that something you do intentionally or that just helps you get more, um, it's just tendency? Yeah, that was something that happened naturally. I never thought about that. And uh, I, I can see it like that my foot comes a little bit like uh, backwards yeah. uh, be after I watch some videos of me playing. Mm. Because when I'm playing, I never realize it that. Yeah, you know? I, I think that's the, that's something like we all strive for as drummers where we want the technique and the facility to make the sounds that we want to make and, and create the parts we want to create. But if you're sitting there playing a tune like that, thinking about technique. all the technique and stuff, then you're not, you're not in the music. Exactly. And, yeah. I, uh, recently, I saw an interview uh, from Vinny Clayuda, and he said, like, the, 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 when you f you, you're thinking, the thoughts, they are the enemies of the, the flow when you're playing. So when he's playing, he's trying to not think. He's yeah. just playing. He's in the flow. So that's the, not like the reason, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you know? for sure. Um, let's jump into, we've, we've got some new symbols on the kit. Because we're, I guess we're going to do some more more tunes later on. Exactly. Yeah, we have to change a little bit the the, the symbol setup here. Yeah, but let's get into a few more of the the tracks where you're applying Brazilian rhythms mm -hmm. uh, to the kit. And the next one we have is Phantom Self, and this is with the Maraca Two. Exactly. Yes. Uh, I remember when Andreas, the guitar player from Sepultura, he came to me and said, like, let's start a song with a very Brazilian groove. So. Um, he brought to me like a, a, a tape, it so was an old CD, like with some maracatu grooves, and he showed to me like, I want this in the record, how can you play it? It's like, okay, I'm gonna find out how I can play it. Yeah. So in the album, I did like a lot of overdubs to get into the point where we could like have a beautiful maracatu groove. Nice. And uh, it just starts with like, it's a very like raw maracatu uh, rhythm, you know? So I can show to you a little yeah. bit what I'm what I'm playing. It's and I also have like the um, the gem blocks yeah. that I did a, an overdub, and they do something like the, this. Like they have like the the leading voice of the maracatu. 
Fall. And that was it. You know, when we play it live, I just try to to play the snare drum and the floor toms. The rest of the stuff I'm not able to play. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> you need a few more arms. Oh yeah. And I think you were saying yesterday that that that's one of the grooves you used in your modern drummer solo as well. Exactly. Nice. So yeah, go check that out from 2005, and you'll see uh, a 14 year old Eloy using that. <laughs> Playing much better than today, actually. <laughs> just different. <laughs> <laughs> no better. <laughs> nice. Well, we're gonna, uh, we won't play the song yet, but we're gonna do uh, Phantom Self later on. Okay, sure. Um, uh, the next one you have is, this is Ali? Ali, yeah. from Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Ali, um, which song is this? Oh, uh, I remember. There is the middle part of the song where I play a very fast samba pattern. Okay. I keep the ostinato in my fit, like the, the samba ostinato. And I play like a, what do we call the samba rock. It's like a, a samba, but a, you have the, the snare drum on the two and on the four. Gotcha. So my... So why not play it super fast? Why not? <laughs> why not? Like... So that's the, that's cool. the actual pattern that I play in this song. Nice. Yeah, it's a fast rock samba. Samba rock. Samba rock. Love it. Uh, there's one more you got here. This is uh, uh, Means to an End. Means to an End. Yes, that's also going to be a song that I'm going to play today. Yeah. Uh, I remember that I, I came with this pattern uh, to Andreas. Actually, the song was born from the drums. Okay. Uh, that I did like the, the intro part of the song, but uh, there is a middle part in the song. There is like a, a there is a break, and I play this uh, some of school pattern. Mm. So like before the when you have like the carnival in São Paulo, like in, in Brazil, sorry, and uh, these groups they they are about to start playing. They do what we say like the calling. Mm. They call the attention to the percussion part, the per percussion group, saying like, hey, we're going to start to play. You know, so something like... You know, so they do that like just, just to call attention like, hey, we're about to start. So I try to, to simulate that in this, in this part, this specific part. So it's like... Yes. Super cool. All comes from Brazilian music, man. Yeah. It's so beautiful. I think like the coolest part about all of this is like you grew up playing these styles of music, you got into metal, you joined a band, and you're still like dedicated to like honoring those styles of music that come from Brazil. And I'm sure I think that's like a big reason why there's probably such a strong drumming community in Brazil and they and who love your playing so much. I mean your playing's loved all over the world, but oh, I, man. I think yeah. that's just so cool that you're 
still like taking the time and attention to like pay respect to those styles of music and work them into what you're doing now. Oh yeah, man. I'm I'm really grateful for all like the Brazilian fans. And uh, like this is like normal for me to play like, this way, you know? I never yeah. had like to think about like to incorporate the Brazilian music into metal. That's yeah. something that just comes out naturally. Yeah. I never like, I, actually I, I didn't have a choice. That's yeah. who I am. <laughs> That's yeah. who I am. I'm not trying to be someone else. I'm yeah. just being like real. Yeah, you know? love that, man. Let's uh, let's jump to another track. Uh, the next one we've got is Phantom Self. Phantom Self, perfect. Nice. Yeah, let's do it.
Nice work, man. Why? It's <laughs> <laughs> a super cool tune. Oh, yeah. I think my favorite part of that is that middle section where uh, you start using the, the high tom over here and it's kind of like a, almost like a drum break. <laughs> yes, it sense. is, man. Yes, it is. Really cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember how I came up with this part, but it's pretty nice. Yeah. It made a long time that I, I haven't played the song. I, had, I, I played it here like for like, for the first time maybe in five, six years. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, uh, leave it to us to make you bring it out of the, uh, the coffin for once. <laughs> make me relearn the song, actually. Exactly. <laughs> We're just so cruel up here. <laughs> you guys are. Yes, that's uh, what I can say. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, so obviously Sepultura has been around for a long time. You came into the band 2011, right? 2011, yes. And obviously you've, you've made a bunch of records with the band. You have your own voice within that band. But what was that like for you joining the band for the first time? Obviously, you're still playing a lot of those the older material off of Roots and off of some of the uh, the older records that mm -hmm. the fans still want to hear. What was that like for you coming into that band with all that history? Oh, man, that was amazing mm -hmm. because like it's impossible to be in Brazil, to be a Brazilian, to play metal, and to don't know Sepultura. Yeah, you gotta know Sepultura, you know. So when I joined the band, when I was invited to do an audition for them. I already knew how to play a bunch of songs, you know, so that also changed my life, yeah. you know, because back there in 2011, 2010, I was thinking about like give up on drums. Oh, really? Oh, really, man, because it's so difficult like to be a, a, like a musician, especially in Brazil. I know it's difficult everywhere, but uh, I believe in Brazil it's even more difficult to make like a living from the drums or from any instrument. So I was really thinking about like giving up drums and I don't know, like do something else mm. <laughs> where I could like uh, uh, at least live, you know, like pay my bills. Yeah. I never wanted to be rich. That's not the point. But uh, I wanted, uh, I really wanted to live through my instrument, through, through the art, through, through music. Yeah. And, um, and that changed my life for sure. I'm really grateful for Sepultura and the guys, they always, gave me like totally total freedom to do whatever I want to do. So they respect my voice yeah. in the band. Love and that. this is really important. You know, they gave the space so I could create my own stuff. I could come with my 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 way of playing. Mm -hmm. So that changed my life for sure. Very cool, man. And of course, like even we we filmed uh, I guess one of the older older tracks mm -hmm. uh, while you're up here this week. And do you find even when you're playing the stuff that was from past drummers um, you're obviously paying respect to the original parts because the fans can recognize them and stuff. But do you still take some liberties uh, with some of those tracks? And Yes, man. I really respect what those guys, they did mm -hmm. for the band. I respect a lot Igor Cavalera. He's yeah. just amazing, a legend. Jean de la Bella, also a guy like that, that he replaced Igor yeah. at first. And these guys, they are amazing. They are like animals on drums, yeah. you know? So I really respect what they did in the past. Mm -hmm. I, I try my best to play what they played, but I, I change a, a little bit details, like some, some small yeah. details, like drum feels, something that I really like to, to use my own. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but uh, those classic grooves, I have to keep them. You yeah. know, I cannot change those <laughs> classic parts or the fans are gonna kill me. Like, Just play it all as a shuffle. <laughs> and you're good to go. <laughs> Double bass in everything, you yeah. know. Oh, I love that, man. It's it's super cool, like, seeing your story going from growing up playing uh, all the Brazilian music to the Modern Drummer Festival, and now you're in Sepultura, and uh, you're doing it, man. Oh, man, it's, thank uh, you. Super cool, and you're a great teacher, and uh, it's, yeah, it's just great to have you up here to it's, share all of your experience. So. It's my pleasure, man. I really would like to say thank you like to you, to all the Drumio guys, to the Drumio crew for having me here. I think I'm, I'm the first South American to be here, right? I, I believe so. Yeah, the first Brazilian South American. Yeah. So Represent. Representing, man. I yes. love it. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think later this year we may be having uh, Ramon. Ah, Ramon well. Monta Montaigneur, yes. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. We share the, the same space in Brazil. Oh, really? Yes, we are the same like uh, school that love we have the, our studios. That's awesome, yeah. man. All right, man. We're uh, we've come to the end. Ah. Before we go, do you have any any final words of advice to all of the drummers out there watching? 
Uh, it's really difficult to say only one thing to all oh, the drummers. One. Just one. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's done. I'm sure you'll be practice. back and then you get another final piece of advice. <laughs> uh, practice a lot. That's mm -hmm. what I, I can tell you. And what I can say is to like to all the, 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 the drummers that are, are starting to play and, and like who already plays the drums, it's to respect your beliefs, to respect who you are on the kit. You know, don't try to compare yourself to other drummers. Don't try to compare yourself like to any other musicians. Just be yourself. That's the, the most important thing in my opinion. You know, like believe in your music, try to find your own solutions, your way of playing uh, the instrument. Uh, this is it. Yeah. Love it, man. Well, uh, we're going to play, or we're going to close with one final track, uh, Means to an End by Sepultura. And yeah, be on the lookout for everything coming from Eloy on the YouTube channel uh, over the next year, probably. And then also in the members area, there's a really exciting project we're going to be launching in the new year that uh, Eloy filmed a little bit for. So there's a link right below, drumyear.com forward slash trial. And Eloy, thank you so much. And this is means to an end. <laughs>